let's see here. So it's actually funny. This whole thing starts with, uh, I was in vacation a couple weeks ago in Italy, and this older text sends me a text message that says, uh, I have a highly specific request for you. I need for you to get, uh, go to the town hall of Modena and get me a picture of the Secchia Rapita, or the stolen bucket. Um, it's this bucket that was stolen in 1325, and from there I start looking into this story. Um, and so this is the, uh, the War of the Bucket is the catchy name of this Battle of Zappolino, which took place on November 15th in 1325. All the versions that you really hear about this story is that the bucket was the premise for this, for this entire battle. It's the beginning of, um, of this conflict. Uh, this illustration is from Alessandro Tassini's heroic mock opera, uh, where we see uh, Spinamonte running away with a bucket, and it's in this action uh, that causes the war. Um, the battle is on many lists of the dumbest wars of all time, exactly because it's this idea of that someone, it's over a bucket. <laughs> Buckets! I'm going to use that again and again. Okay. <laughs> and so Spinamonte steal this bucket from, Mod from the Modenese. Uh, the Modenese steal this bucket, and then the Bolognese demand for the return of it, um, and then, uh, let's see. <laughs> I really like this drawing, so none of us, it's funny, like you sold I was gonna ask her to do a drawing of this thing, and then I found this thing on the internet randomly. Um, it kind of shows you how like, people are really interested in this story, even though it's this like 700 year old conflict. Um, <laughs> Uh, so the Bolognese demand the return of the bucket, and when Modena refuses, uh, the Bolognese decide that uh, it's had enough. Um, and so they uh, lay siege to Modena. Um, but it still begs this question of like, why so much uh, for this bucket? Um, in some versions of the story, the bucket was filled with loot, like gold. In other versions, uh, the Modenese raided Bologna and filled it with gold, and then uh, that's why it was so valuable. Um, but it's still widely depicted as sort of the last straw that broke the camel's back. And so the question is, what were the other straws? Like, what led to this thing? Why did it uh, become this, like, massive uh, ordeal? Um, and so interestingly enough, this is not a depiction of the uh, Battle of Zappolino, uh, which this uh, talk is about, but this is the uh, 1176 uh, Battle of Legnano that started this conflict that would be the framework for which all of this stuff happens. Um, in, May 9, in May 29th of 1176, the Holy Roman Emperor, Frederick Barbosa, was defeated at the Battle of Lignano by the Lombard League, which supported the, supported by Pope Alexander. Um, so we have this uh, conflict between a Holy Roman Emperor and, uh, and the papacy. Um, and this was the start of a pro long protracted conflict in, the, in medieval Italy that would be between uh, the Guelphs and the Ghibellines. Um, the Guelphs are affiliated with Pope Alexander, or the, Pope, the papacy, and the Ghibellines are uh, affiliated with the Holy Roman Emperor. Um, and sort of towns and regions sort of picked their sides um, uh, depending on who they were aligned with. Um, <clears throat> and so this war the, uh, between the Guelphs and the Ghibellines continued for another 350 years um, and only stopped uh, when Charles I of Spain seized the imperial power uh, of Italy during the Italian wars. Uh, and faced with the threat of invasion, uh, they finally aligned and decided to uh, uh, team up against the Spanish. Um, so the Guelphs were the, and in this story, uh, the Guelphs are, uh, the Bolognese are the Guelphs, and the Modenese who stole the bucket are uh, with the Ghibelline faction. Um, so this is the region of Italy where we're looking at here. Um, sort of, uh, these are our two towns. Uh, sorry, the northwest here is where the um, where Modena is, and you see Bologna there on the east. Um, and there's some mountain ranges uh, all down at the south. And so the story that we would hear, the typical story that we'd know, we'd have you believe, is that the Bolognese, uh, after the bucket was stolen, uh, raided Modena and went straight there and uh, laid siege to the town. Um, just to give you a little bit more context, uh, this is the, uh, where we are in Italy. Um, and zooming in a little bit further, this is the uh, mountain range uh, that splits uh, Italy at that point. And at the bottom, you see that Florence, uh, which was a major, major trading partner. And so control over the passes between these two lands is sort of a big deal. And so uh, you can see how uh, the fight between Modena and Bologna, uh, the Guelphs and the Ghibellines, is this cultural thing, but it's also uh, rooted in finance and politics and all these things. Um, the Bolognese had a uh, pact with the with Florentines, and uh, they assisted them in battle. But um, uh, yeah, this was really about uh, a lot more than that. Um, so this is the, town, the towns again. 
Um, and this sort of heats up in 1296, the Bolognese successfully invade the Bolognese lands of Bizzano and Savigno. You see them there uh, in the south, right in the mountain regions there. There are two separate uh, regions. Uh, so you see that they're kind of right in the middle in between the two areas. Um, and so uh, Bizzano will come into play later on. Um, in September of 1325, uh, the Modenese uh, capture a stronghold of Monteveglio, that little yellow uh, beacon there. It's at the top of a mountain, so it's right. Uh, it's important strategically for you, so that you can see, uh, you can control the trading paths as they're coming through. Um, in response to this, the Bolognese send 32,000 troops uh, to take back this castle. Um, initially, in the story that we're told is that the Bolognese invaded Modena for this bucket, um, but here we're seeing that they actually uh, went back to get this uh, castle back. Um, it's interesting to note also that uh, the seizure of, the, of Monteveglio was in uh, September, in late September of 1325, and uh, the Bolognese sought to recapture it in, by early November, so pretty quickly assembled a force of 32,000 troops, 30,000 foot soldiers, and 2,000 cavalrymen who were described as being haphazardly armed. Uh, <laughs> and they were faced with a much, much smaller force uh, that included three major captains, uh, and one of them was the Azione of Visconti of Milan, who had uh, a band of professional German troops that are basically the prototype for what we know as barbarians. So they had a very highly trained uh, force, although they were a lot smaller. Um, so the Bolognese uh, forces are stationed back here after they've received Monteveglio. Um, and then they see um, very shortly after that that there is a, uh, a coming approach. So at the north there near Modena you see uh, the Ponte de Sant'Ambrogio uh, and lower in the south there you see Bizzano, which interestingly enough Bizzano is where there was the, um, the initial seizure. So you can kind of see how the Bolognese would imagine that they're on their way back and they're taking their towns and also coming back to grab uh, uh, Monteveglio again. Here's a, a better view of it. Um, you see that uh, the Roca de Monteveglio, which is a stronghold, is at the top of this mountain. So you can see people coming from a long uh, distance. So you can see why it's important. Um, and here you see where the other two regions were, where the, uh, uh, the Modenese were ostensibly coming from. Um, but what they didn't know is that the Modenese were actually stationed down here directly to their west the entire time. And so while they sent a lot of troops all the way to the north to sort of hold off the advance, um, the Modenese attacked and surprised them and quickly captured all of their leaders and their best men who were holding back waiting for this big fight that was coming that never happened. Um, and so the battle actually takes place here. That star right there at the bottom is Zappolino, which the battle is named after. Um, so there was no raid on Modena. It was here in Zappolino where this fight took place. And so the Modenese take uh, the, uh, the Bolognese very easily, and they f the Bolognese forces flee all the way back to Bologna quickly because they have no leaders to tell them what to do. And along the way, the Modenese destroy six more castles <laughs> on the way to, the, to Bologna. They're taking and sieging and destroying everything. Um, they also destroy um, the Chiusa del Reno nel Casalecchio, uh, which is a, uh, um, basically like a dam that diverts uh, the water supply to the city. So they're, a, a large part of this, uh, these medieval conflicts is that there were these giant walled cities, and if you couldn't take the city itself, you could attack uh, all of the resources that they had outside. And a lot of it was food, or agricultural um, things, but this was uh, sort of a direct hit um, to their resources by destroying their water supply, at least in the short term. Um, and so in the middle of this great battle that they're still fighting, um, the next thing that they decide to do is um, <laughs> hold a palio. A palio is a traditional Italian athletic contest with horse racing, archery, uh, jousting, crossbows, and crossbow shooting and all other kinds of medieval sports. They basically held some games with people in costumes uh, to sort of mock the Bolognese who are out inside basically routed um, and all of their uh, major troops are uh, captured. Um, and so the Palio is right there. You see it right, um, right next to where the town of Bologna is outside of the gates. Um, and this is where we really see where it is here that the, at the tail end of the battle that the bucket was stolen from the westernmost gate and the outer walls of uh, Bologna at the Porta San Felice. It's this last 
portal before you enter in the city. Um, and the Bolognese took it back to their own town and put it in the top of this tower. Um, <laughs> and they held it at the top there for 600 years. It was only taken down in 1911 to put a replica there so that they could bring it inside and have the thing inside in their town hall. Um, so it lived hung there for anyone who wanted to come look at it uh, for hundreds of years. Um, and so it sort of begs the question, like, how did this story that we know about the Sekia Rapita, how did this become the, you know, the, the major story that we know? Well, the interesting thing to note is that uh, this was written by Alessandro Tassani uh, in 1611 and was first published in Paris in 1622. So full 300 years after this conflict took place, someone wrote about it. Um, and you can kind of imagine that um, this bucket was not necessarily, um, it might not have been the cause of the war, but after having been held there for so 600 years, that it um, became a sort of a source of ire between these two towns, that it became like increasing. Um, and it's interesting, even though this is sort of a mock opera, kind of like Homer's Odyssey, but a satirical, the onion version of that thing. <laughs> Um, uh, Tassoni is still a beloved character for having written this uh, major work uh, that, for the, which the town is known. Um, this is a statue of Tassoni um, right outside. The, it's, um, the building to the right there is the base of the tower where the tower was, the base of the tower where the bucket was held for 600 years. Um, interestingly enough, uh, I took this photograph because I went to the town myself. Um, <laughs> um, this is the other side of the... Um, of the of that entire structure, um, you can see the tower uh, looming on the on the back left corner there, um, that with that beautiful rose window. This church was uh, this um, this is the Duomo di Modena. In 1997, it was uh, set up as a as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, it was this beautiful rose window and it had this um, it's tremendous uh, beautiful inside, um, and it was it served there as a. Um, it was kind of a guide for travelers and, uh, and tradesmen who were tr uh, trading along these routes. When you reach this uh, spectacular building, you knew where you were. Um, so not only was it where all these people passed through, but that bucket hung up there the entire time for all those years. Um, so I went to the town hall right here, uh, which because of this uh, UNESCO uh, heritage site, it has, um, it is a, the town hall is also a United Nations Information Center. Um, so I walked up to this counter with my like Google Translate in my phone, like pronounce this right, don't fuck this up. Um, I went up to say, I asked her and she like looked, greeted me kind of sternly and I said, la sequia rapita and she got really excited. Like she got wavy hands excited. It was kind of ridiculous. Uh, yeah. And so she passes me off to this other guy and he like doesn't give a shit and kind of just walks us upstairs and very casually just goes, okay, just go in there. And we're confronted with this. Um, <laughs> so we see this thing and the first thing I think is I want to drop everything I have, grab this bucket and run away with it. Because it's just like, I just want to do this thing. Get the fuck out of here. Um, but here it is, it's this, you know, it's this great thing, it's this entire hall where they have all these historical uh, relics from, from the town of Modena and this bucket is like so proudly pronounced. Um, and it's funny, when we were doing the research for this thing, I really wanted to find out like what was the source of this thing, you know, kind of trying to get a sense of where it was. And after all this research, I decided to go back to my photos and I found that I actually took a photograph of the placard in front of it. Um, where it says, uh, displayed in the center of the room after centuries of being jealously guarded by the Geraldina Tower is the famous Sekir Rapita, the war trophy of which the Modernese snatched from the uh, Bolognese during the Battle of Zabolino. Um, so that is me when I said, oh my God, this thing has been in front of me the entire time and I didn't bother to look. Um, <laughs> So it's just this bucket that was this, you know, it just lays there in state. It's, I think people really want this to be true, even though all the information is really there and all the articles you see about conflicting stories about the origin of the bucket and why it was stolen, there was a bucket stolen after. So all the information is there, but people still want it to be uh, what uh, this simple story about a bucket that caused a war. I um, mean, it's so easily understood that it just lives as this as, and not some messy centuries old, um, political pissing contest between two warring factions in Italy. I think we love the concept of a conflict in which 30,000 people fought over this one tiny relic. Um, and they sent 32,000 people uh, to fight and where 2,000 people went to their deaths and they still didn't get this bucket back. Um, <laughs> I mean, even the, in the end, even though I was sort of led into this with the quick uh, clickbait headline version of the story, 
Um, I was left with this really intense glimpse of this complicated medieval saga. And uh, so here's to all the uh, pithy, maybe not exactly totally real stories that we hear that lead us to these fascinating quarters of history. And old Italian halls. <laughs>